The man boldly enters the bank, carrying a gun, jumps on the table, and starts shooting at the ceiling to attract attention. He asks everyone to lie down on the floor. There is a lot of money, gold, and diamonds in the bank, but they take them outside to burn. This isn't a bank robbery, so what's going on? One day before robbing a bank, Calvin and his accomplices are members of the Black Liberation Movement in South Africa. Many of their comrades are killed, but they know that they are contributing to a noble cause. They receive orders from their superiors to sabotage strategic key points in the capital to put pressure on the government, but the action must not cause civilian casualties. Calvin's group consists of four people, Tara, Calvin, Masego, and Aldo, and their target is the city's oil tank. Calvin drives everyone to the opposite side of the oil tank, where they are waiting for supporter to go inside and place explosives. But the supporter has not arrived yet, in fact, their actions have been exposed, and the police are already here waiting to arrest them. Calvin gets out of the car to examine the situation, but he quickly realizes something is wrong. He realizes that the driver of the truck is not his person. He gets in the truck, abandons his mission, and immediately withdraws the team. The situation is critical, but the car takes a while to start. The police are following their car, and a chase takes place. The cargo truck is quite old, so it can't go fast, but they try to successfully cut off the police. But now the wheel is punctured, and they have to rush into a building to hide. But the police arrive, Masego is shot and dies, and Calvin defeats a policeman. Tara is extremely sad because she lost her husband. She hugs her husband's body but can't do anything. Calvin advises her to immediately retreat. Tara holds the gun and shoots at the helicopter above. As soon as they retreat, a police car arrives, and the police begin searching the whole building. The captain in charge of the case, Johan, picks up Calvin's inhaler. Calvin has asthma, so he always carries it with him. The three of them go down into the sewers and escape. They climb onto the street, take off their old clothes, and hide in the crowd. But the police discover them, and they are chased furiously by the police. Calvin can no longer run because he has asthma, so the police catch up, forcing them to use guns to stop the police. The police are dispatched in increasing numbers, and three people enter a nearby bank. Tara carefully closes all the front doors. Calvin calms the remaining two and comes up with a plan. There are all white people in the bank, and there is only one black person standing in line with the white people. He is immediately chased away by the white manager Johan. Christine is the supervisor here. She is very sympathetic to black people, so she proactively steps forward to help this guy. The police are dispatched and surround the bank. An alarm is raised because they know there are many white hostages inside. Calvin stands up on the table and fires his gun into the air and asks the hostages to cooperate, promising that he will not kill anyone if they obey. Leaving his teammates outside to gather the hostages in one place, Calvin goes inside to see if anyone else is there. He catches Christine smoking inside the file room, and she is taken out with the other hostages. Aldo sees a lot of policemen through the door, and he starts to worry. He wants to go home to his pregnant wife who is about to give birth. There are definitely traitors in the group, that's why they are rounded up by the police. The police also know everyone's name and family background. Calvin sees the figure of a police officer climbing up the window above. He immediately shoots his gun in that direction, and screams ring out everywhere in the bank. The phone rings, Calvin answers, he meets Captain Johan, who advises them to surrender. Calvin requests a helicopter within 20 minutes, with an unarmed pilot to take them to a safe location. Captain Johan agrees to comply with Calvin's request, and a helicopter is quickly dispatched to the scene. Calvin apologizes to the hostages and chooses manager Johan to become a hostage to board the helicopter. Tara searches the pilot and finds nothing. They begin boarding the helicopter to move, but Aldo keeps hesitating without going, causing the plan to fail. The pilot also has a weapon and almost succeeds in shooting Calvin. This time they return to the bank and bring along another hostage, the pilot. It turns out that he has a listening device on him, so the police can track their location. Tara is very angry with Aldo, she begins to vent her anger on the pilot. She submerges his head in the water and asks about spies but gets no results, so she has to leave. A group of police also begins arriving in front of the bank. According to the Major General, the daughter of the Minister of Justice is Christine. They begin placing agents and snipers around the bank. When he hears the pilot talking about Nelson Mandela, Calvin comes up with a new plan. He thinks the police will not forgive them, he wants to turn this into a fighting movement. Calvin immediately calls Captain Johan to make a new request. He arranges to meet Johan at the bank door to talk. He demands that the government release Mandela, a boxer who speaks out about racism and is sent to prison. This must be approved in writing, signed by the Prime Minister. He gives the police one hour to fulfill the request to put pressure on the police. Calvin begins to take money from the bank to burn. Every hour after not receiving information, he will burn that money again. In the bank lobby, manager Johan starts causing trouble, making angry Tara. He despises black people. Tara forces him to lie on the table and puts the gun to his head. Christine has to speak up for Tara to release him. When the time comes, 
Calvin chooses a black man to help him burn a cart of money. Seeing that they are all black people, the Major General asks Captain Johan to order them to be shot. Amanda sneaks into the document room and discovers the pilot's body hidden there along with the knife used to commit the crime. Calvin doesn't see Amanda anywhere and goes looking for her, discovering that she is looking for a way to escape. Amanda is discovered and immediately pulls out a knife to threaten Calvin but fails. She is taken back to the hostages. Calvin is always wondering about spies in the group. After 15 minutes, Calvin brings matches, and the priest volunteers to help him burn the money. When the priest is preparing to burn, the document of amnesty and release is sent. The document is signed by the Prime Minister himself. The captain puts down his gun and begins to negotiate with Calvin. He says he needs to go in and see and make sure the hostages are safe. Then Nelson Mandela will truly be released. Calvin agrees to let him in, Aldo is the one who checks the captain before letting him inside. After entering, he calms the hostages. He advises Christine to go out with him, but she is still determined to stay here. Captain Johan realizes the pilot is missing, at which point Calvin decides to kick him out. Tara finds a gun hidden in the captain's right leg, things get tense, and Calvin tries to calm it down. Tara asks the captain's name, Aldo had accidentally mentioned his name before to Tara. His identity as a spy is exposed, he cries and apologizes and says that his wife has been captured by them. Tara says nothing and shoots Aldo straight in the head, killing him. Calvin realizes the document he is holding in his hand is fake, so he chases the captain away before something worse happens. When he goes out, Captain Johan receives orders to prepare to break into the bank. He doesn't agree with the Major General's orders. He thinks that Calvin is fighting for justice, and he doesn't want anyone else to die. But the Major General believes that black people are evil people. Calvin begins to break down because everything he is doing is failing. Christine comes over, she tells Calvin about her black nanny. She's like a second mother who taught her a lot about equality. She wants to help Calvin. Christine follows Calvin to the bank door. She also starts chanting slogans to free Mandela. A sniper pulls the trigger, and the bullet hits Christine. Calvin takes her inside. Her situation is extremely serious and cannot be survived. The sniper is taken to the captain, but the Major General takes him away. He promises the sniper he will take care of him and let him go. Amanda takes off her wig to reveal her real hair. She is mixed black and white. She brings a glass of water to Calvin and tells him about the suffering she has had to endure because of this racism. Calvin's parents were also shot dead by the police even though they knelt down and begged for their lives, which makes Calvin determined to change this unfair regime. Captain Johan calls to inform Calvin that the Major General is sending a special task force. They intend to kill both Calvin and the hostages in it. Calvin quietly hangs up, he lies to everyone that the government has agreed to release Mandela, and everyone is happy. Only Tara sits still, they release all the hostages so that no one else will die. The Major General orders the special task force to go inside, and a firefight takes place. More people fall, and Calvin and Tara fight until their last breath. The special forces are all shot dead. The Major General, who has lost many people, is extremely angry. He orders the special forces to continue moving inside no matter how many people fall. Tara and Calvin are also hit, but they continue to reload and fight. The movie ends here. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to receive the earliest videos. Thanks for watching.